Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the metals module of Year 11 Chemistry. And in the previous two lessons we talked about mineral ores and refining minerals in terms of copper extraction. But this time we're going to talk about, well now that we've got our pure aluminium, can we actually recycle it? So what can we do to actually sort of extend the lifetime of the metals that we extract from the ground? So that's what we're going to talk about today, aluminium recycling. So why do we need to recycle aluminium? Well, in order to extract aluminium from its ore, which we call bauxite, it's an incredibly energy intensive process. So I don't know if you know this, but um, when the carbon tax came out, one of the industries that got hit the hardest was our aluminium industry. Um, well, that's what they say anyway, because aluminium refinement is so energy intensive that often aluminium smelters may have um, power plants attached to their smelting refineries just to fuel this process. Okay, so they have whole power plants dedicated just to aluminium. Whereas if you think about the power plants in Australia, they're powering tens of millions of homes. These ones are just, you know, powering just aluminium refinement. So you can see how energy intensive that is. But aluminium is used in lots of industries. So we kind of just see it as cans. Okay, so I drink from my soft drink can and throw my can away. But aluminium is actually used in a lot of other industries, like aircraft, because it's such a lightweight metal. It's also used in electrical wires because it's such a lightweight metal. And so it's used a lot. So by recycling, the lifetime of the material can actually be prolonged. So by recycling the aluminium, we can actually prolong its life. Um, we can actually give it use after it's been used once. Okay, so what is the actual aluminium refined recycling process? Well, it's basically what we expect it to be. Waste aluminium is collected at local centers for aluminium wastes. So we put our little cans in our recycling bins and then those bins get moved to a recycling plant and then they sort the aluminium into, obviously, the, they take out the aluminium from the rest of the recycling and then um, they collect it okay, and take it somewhere else to get it refined properly. This collection process helps to concentrate. Remember in um, extraction, we wanted to concentrate the, the copper and in the same way, we want to try and concentrate the aluminium because we want it to be, uh, we want to have as much of it as possible so that we can sort of work with the economy of scale. So the more we have, the more economic it's going to be. Because we'll have our big machines crushing it up, melting it, rather than just one can. Okay? So we help, it helps to concentrate the waste aluminium in one place so that recycling is more economic. Okay? So that's the key making it more economic for the recycling people. Waste aluminium is sorted based on the composition of the alloy. Okay, so if I've got a, you know, a jet engine made of aluminium, I'm not going to try and recycle it the same way as an aluminium can, because that's just silly. They're very different metals, and so they need very different refining processes, otherwise it will contaminate the aluminium. So we have to sort the aluminium based on their composition so that we don't get any contamination. So here's that said. Um, so different alloys have different purposes and so their recycling processes will vary slightly. Okay, so their processes will vary a little bit. Sorting also helps to reduce the contamination of the alloys. Like I said, we don't want to cross-contaminate because you know some aircraft manufacturer is going to try and put together a jet engine it's going to be contaminated with some of the aluminium can aluminium and then we'll have a jet engine that will blow up and then you'll have a very angry pilot. Okay, so you really don't want contamination, and particularly in very high risk applications like jets and things like that. So once the, the, sorted, once the alloys are sorted, um, once sorted the alloys are melted down. Okay, so once we sort the alloys, we melt them down then the liquid aluminium is analyzed and the comp composition is adjusted just before casting. Okay, so when we melt it down, maybe there's some impurities still, 
we make sure to take them out, and then we cast the, the aluminium. So the liquid aluminium is cast into ingots. Okay, so what does that mean? So you can see after the melting process there, the big fire down at the bottom, um, it's you know then cast into a new shape. Um, it could be a can, but usually it's ingots, which are those sort of, they look sort of like this. The little bars of gold, that's what an ingot is. Well, let's see if I can draw this in 3D. This is going to be a test of my skills. So it looks sort of like that, and it's just a block of aluminium. So the liquid aluminium is cast into ingots. And then these ingots are transported to manufacturers. Okay? So it's very simple, this process. And you can see it's a lot simpler than the copper extraction process. So all we do is we collect the aluminium. We sort it into its different alloys. Then once we've sorted it, we melt it down. And then we test it just to see if there's any impurities or anything that we're missing. We fix that, then we cast it into ingots, those little bars, and then we ship those bars off to people that, um, that want to turn it into something else. Maybe they want to turn it into cans or jet engines or something. We ship it off to them. Okay? And that's how we recycle aluminium. So this concludes today's lesson on aluminium recycling. We looked at the whole process, and it's a very simple process because aluminium has already been refined. So it's, it's very easy now. We're just going to try and get it back. So that's the key process here. It's cheaper, easier, um, and a lot less energy intensive than copper ex and aluminium ex extraction. OK, so we'll move on to the question segment now. So explain why extraction and refinement of aluminium is more energy intensive than recycling. Okay, so what is the chemical reason for that? Well, extraction requires large amounts of energy as aluminium is found chemically bonded to other elements. So separating the aluminium requires, a, requires breaking up strong chemical bonds. So bauxite is aluminium combined with oxygen. And because they're combined chemically, it takes a lot of energy to separate them, okay, to get the pure aluminium. So that's why it's very energy intensive to get pure aluminium, because it takes a lot of energy to separate those bonds. Since refined aluminium will have far less impurities, there will be less chemical bonds, and recycling aluminium should require significantly less energy. We've already refined it once, so it's already mostly aluminium. We just got to make sure we take out some of those impurities. And so obviously, because we're not breaking as many bonds, there should be less energy going into um, recycling aluminium compared to its extraction. Okay, so you can see just chemically the reason why this should work better. Okay. Explain how recycling aluminium can reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So something I'm quite concerned about is greenhouse gases. So how can recycling aluminium actually reduce that? Well, firstly we need to recognize that recycling aluminium takes up only about 5% of the energy compared to extraction. So extraction takes about 20 times as much energy as recycling does. Now currently, most of the world's energy is produced by combustion of fossil fuels. And in Australia, that percentage is higher than the global average. Okay, so around the globe, I think it's around 80 or 90% um, fossil fuels. In Australia, it could be higher than 95%. So we've got a very high usage of fossil fuels. So by reducing the energy requirements to produce aluminium, a significant amount of fossil fuels are no longer needed. So let's say that all of our aluminium in Australia can be supplied by recycled aluminium. That's 20 times less energy that we needed to use, 20 times less fossil fuels we needed to burn. So that's 20 times less greenhouse emissions that we had before. Therefore, recycling can significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions because we're cutting down the amount of energy that we actually need. And because most of that energy comes from fossil fuels, it's cutting down the amount of fossil fuels that we use. Okay? And that's why it can help with this whole greenhouse gas emission problem. Explain why sorting is critical to the recycling process. So why do we need to sort things? So many applications of aluminium require very low contamination rates. We can't have too much contamination. 
Examples include aircraft parts or high-stress machinery. Okay, so we don't want aircrafts to start breaking apart mid-flight because there's people inside them and they're not going to be happy falling 30,000 feet um, into ground. Okay, so um, you can't have fail failures due to bad compositions in aircraft. And in high-stress machinery, you don't want something to break because it could break catastrophically and you could hurt people. So we don't want them in high-stress machinery either. So recycled aluminium needs to have low impurity numbers or unexpected failures can arise. So if I think that this aluminium is the same gray that I'm used to and I go and build my machine as normal, then I could end up having a fault because this aluminium isn't actually what I expected and so it just breaks down. So we can't have that, so we have to keep the contamination as low as possible. Now sorting helps to reduce these impurities by sorting the alloys based on their uh, sorting the aluminium based on their alloy. So by sorting it, we sort of instantly remove some of those contaminants because they just aren't in the the bunch anymore. We've made sure to keep each alloy separate so that when they melt it down, they'll just be the same alloy anyway. Okay, so that's why sorting is important. So what properties of aluminium make it desirable for many industrial applications? So why is aluminium good? Okay, that's a big question. So it has a number of properties that are useful for industry. And in particular, it's low density. That's probably one of its biggest pros. It's extremely low density. It's a very light metal. Um, if you had a tin, if you had um, a can of tin compared to aluminium, it would be significantly heavier than the can. It's got quite high strength, it's got good strength, and excellent conduct electrical conductivity. And that makes it suitable for a huge number of applications. High strength and low density make it useful for aircraft. Okay? So aircraft want things really, really strong, because you know, a jet could be flying at twice the speed of sound. But it also has to be light, because it's flying twice the speed of sound. So you need to have, make sure that the plane is light, but strong. So aluminium is a good metal for that. And because it's low density and high electrically conductive, um, we can use it for electrical wires. So even though I might have a fatter wire than copper, I might need a bigger wire. Because it's so much less dense than copper, even though I have a bigger wire, it's still be lighter. So I don't need to, um, to put as many towers in, which would cost a lot more money. Okay? because those big electrical towers will cost a lot of money to build, but with aluminium I don't have to put as many in because it's so light. So um, it's just a money saving thing there. Okay. So question 15. Justify the increased recycling of metals in our society and across the world? Well, metals are non-renewable and a finite resource, which will eventually run out. So that's the first reason. Metals, we can't replenish, so we have to make sure that we utilize them as best we can. And in our world, we use metals extensively. And across, so we use the metals extensively in our society and across the world for everything from electrical wiring to construction of buildings and vehicles. So electricity is important for us, buildings are important, vehicles are important, and we use metals for all of these things. Now the advantages of recycling met metals are it saves energy and thus less use of fossil fuels in power stations and less pollution. It means that metals can last for longer, so that future generations can utilize them, rather than just us. Um, less distri this distribution of environment in mining. So when we mine, we actually destroy some of the environment and spread it out. So we disturb the environment less when we mine, because we don't have to mine as much. Less landfill. So we don't need as much landfill because we don't have any metal products in landfill, so that's good. And recycling can be a business in itself, and so it creates jobs. Okay, that's good for the economy as well. And some metals, aluminium, can be recycled many times and still be pro produced as the same quality products. So even though we recycle aluminium hundreds of times, it could still be produced at the same level of quality as the original product. Okay, so it's very well, um, it's excellent for recycling purposes. 
If we hope to continue using metals, we must find a way to reuse the supplies we have available. And that's key. We need to be able to recycle um, to better utilize this metal, otherwise we're going to have no metals for the future and we're going to have to figure something else out. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on aluminium recycling and this series on minerals and ores. We looked at minerals and ores in the first lesson, copper extraction in the second, and now aluminium recycling. And in this lesson we looked at aluminium recycling process and each of the steps, and there was not many, very many. So hopefully you've learned something about aluminium recycling and I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.